Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the role of cofactors, coenzymes and prosthetic groups in enzymes. And this is for the OCR spec. So far on this topic we've looked at the features of enzymes. We've seen that the active site of an enzyme is where the substrate binds to form the enzyme substrate complex. The enzyme then catalyzes the reaction forming the enzyme product complex. And finally the product leaves the active site allowing another substrate molecule to bind. Now one key idea you need to understand is that many enzymes function in partnership with another chemical and scientists call these chemicals cofactors. I'm showing you an example here. This is the enzyme amylase. Amylase is found in the digestive system where it catalyzes the hydrolysis of starch to the disaccharide maltose. So the substrates for amylase are starch and water. Now for this reaction to happen the chloride ion also has to attach to the amylase molecule and without the chloride ion, the amylase cannot catalyze the reaction. So in this case, the chloride ion is acting as a cofactor. Now you need to understand that chloride is not a substrate for amylase, but it's required for amylase to catalyze the reaction. Now chloride is a simple mineral ion which we get from our diet. However, many cofactors are complex organic molecules, and the word organic means based on the element carbon. A good example is the molecule NAD. NAD is a large organic molecule which temporarily binds to many of the enzymes involved in respiration. And the role of NAD is to transfer hydrogen atoms from one molecule to another. We'll be looking at NAD in much more detail when we look at respiration. Now when a cofactor is a large organic molecule like NAD, then scientists call it a coenzyme. There are lots of different coenzymes in biology, and many of them come from vitamins which we get in our diet. For example, NAD is made from the vitamin niacin, which is also called vitamin B3. So as you can see, cofactors can be relatively small, such as the chloride ion, or they can be large organic molecules, such as NAD. And in the case of large organic molecules, we also call them coenzymes. Now in many cases, cofactors do not bind permanently to their enzyme. So for example, NAD moves between different enzymes in respiration. However, in some cases, a cofactor can be a permanent part of the enzyme structure. And in this case, we call the cofactor a prosthetic group. A good example is the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. Carbonic anhydrase catalyzes the formation of carbonic acid from carbon dioxide and water. And we look at carbonic anhydrase in more detail when we look at the blood. Carbonic anhydrase contains a zinc ion, which is permanently bound to the enzyme. So in this case, the zinc ion is a prosthetic group. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe the role of cofactors, coenzymes and prosthetic groups in enzymes. 